What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Today I wanted to talk about um, doing well on your clinical rotations, how to do well on your clinical rotations. Um, I've been out of medical school for a couple of years now and um, uh, we, we have a, quite a few students that rotate with us with orthopedic surgery, mostly your uh, AIs uh, of your uh, sub-Is. Uh, for those of you who don't know what an AI is, an acting internship during your fourth year of med school you spend a month doing certain um, specialties, and um, it may be the specialty that you're going into. If it's orthopedic surgery, you do an AI in orthopedic surgery. Also, they have mandatory AIs, such as medicine, internal medicine, or you have to uh, do a um, AI in internal medicine. But to do well on the clinical rotations, here we go. I think, first of all, I think be yourself. Try not to be someone else, just be yourself. Us in orthopedics, we in orthopedics, we like uh, people who are themselves, who are cool to be around, who kind of like similar interests that we like, things that, like, that we do. Most orthopedic surgeons like to work out, play sports, talk about football, basketball, women. That's what we do. That's what we talk about in the OR. So, um, so just be yourself. Try not to be anyone else. Uh, number two is to um, be on time at all times actually be early if you're on time you're late and that's what I got out from the military uh, the military taught me that if you're on time you're late so get there 45 minutes before 30 minutes before you're supposed to be there you're supposed to be there at 6 30 you need to get there at 5 45 during that time you could be reading you can be studying doing some questions reviewing the uh, cases for that day or the patients for that day or you can go spend some time with the patients. You know, as a medical student, you should know everything about every single patient. Um, if your patient uh, has a dog named Molly, you, sh you should know that. You should spend as much time with that patient as you can, learn about their disease process, ask some questions. Uh, you can learn a lot that way. Um, because as a resident, I may have 15, 20 patients that I need to see that day. So it's hard to get those little small details down. Uh, but spend some time with your patients, especially as a medical student. Uh, next, I would say is to um, follow up. And what I mean by that is if you have a patient and then rounds in the morning time, we can say, okay, we're going to order a CT scan of this patient today. We're going to get him a MRI of his back. We're going to order this. We're going to order a TSH to check his uh, thyroid function. Your job as a medical student is to follow up on that and be the first person to find out the results. What's really impressive to me is when a student comes up and they tell me that, hey, that CT scan that we ordered on Miss Blake is back. I took a look at the CT scan. I don't know how to read them, but uh, I think it shows that she has some fluid in her abdomen. That's really impressive to me because it shows that you're taking the initiative, you're following up on things. Um, that's what's gonna get you, um, you know, the uh, highest grades in your clinical rotations. There is a mnemonic in medical school, it's called RIPE, R-I-P-E, and it's how we grade medical students, it's how residents get graded also at, at, at um, certain levels. And the RIPE stands for reporter, interpreter, manager, and also educator. I'm sorry, it's RIME, R-I-M-E. Um, reporter is someone who just interprets data so if you get some labs back for a patient they'll just tell you that information interpreter is a person who takes it one step further and say okay this patient has uh, these labs here and they show that the patient has metabolic acidosis which could be caused from lots of different things mnemonic in med school that I learned was mud piles um, methanol uric acid um, Paraldehyde diet, whatever. I don't mess with that stuff anymore as a bone doctor. Um, a manager is someone who takes it a step further and kind of uh, shows that they can actually manage a patient. An educator actually teaches a patient. So if you want to get honors, high pass, and A's in your clinical rotations, you need to be at that either that manager level or that um, educator letter level. And one thing I did as a medical student, say for instance, a patient had a uh, appendectomy. 
I would print out a um, the articles, maybe the latest articles in the New England Journal of Medicine, and what, when I presented on that patient that morning, I would hand out the articles. I'll say, hey, if this patient has um, appendicitis, we're treating them with IV antibiotics, NPO, NG2, whatever. Here is an article for everyone to read about appen um, appendicitis, the latest information on appendicitis. That's how you're gonna get honors. That's how you're gonna get the uh, educator uh, kind of level, level of distinction. Um, and lastly, I would say, I always bring something to read. Um, and lots of my evaluations from third and fourth year, they all mentioned that every time we had downtime, I, my head was in a book and I was reading. Take advantage of the downtime that you have during the day. I always have a book on you because you may get 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there, and by the time the end of the day, you could have read two hours worth of uh, you know, your studies uh, by, by the day is over with. So those are my points to um, and tips for you guys to be successful in your third and fourth year of uh, medical school. Um, I think um, if you guys work hard, network, come to work early, study, bring a uh, book to read, ask a lot of questions, be enthusiastic, um, I think you'll do well. This is Dr. Webb here, and until next time, if you guys have any questions, hit me up on my email, overcomingtheoddsbook at gmail.com or my website at antoniawebmd.com. See you next time.